that's why I'm still here and standing before you because of the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace not only to me but to us all and it is always a blessing and a joy for me to see each and every one of you come Sunday to gather with the church family brothers and sisters of the Lord fellow believers and followers of Christ people desiring not only to worship God together to honor him but to grow together in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord as we continue to live our lives indeed for the glory and honor of his name fulfilling not our will but the will of him who called us and saved us and to be faithful until he returns the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon we don't know the time, but the Lord has been reminding us in His Word to be faithful no matter what we face, to keep our minds stayed on Him. And so I invite you now to get your Bibles or a copy of your Bible and turn them to Proverbs, a very familiar, if not a favorite text or verse for many, if not all of us. Proverbs chapter 3, you already know, 5 and 6. And as I read, let's all stand, even as we honor God in the reading of His Word. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day and this time, this place where You have gathered us, and we thank You for Your presence that we honor and acknowledge You, especially now as we have read Your precious truth. The word that you want us to live by, by faith. Lord, we have read this many times, heard this many times, perhaps even studied it. But many times, Lord God, we fail. And so, Lord God, help us even once again. As you speak to us and your Holy Spirit helps us in the understanding that we will truly, Lord God, be established in this truth, even the instruction or command that you're giving us as we live our lives and continue to live our lives for the glory and honor of your name and your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You may all be seated and like to just welcome each and every one of you once again and our guests who have come, I believe. For the first time, I don't know your names, but uh, thank you for joining us and uh, worshiping the Lord together with us. All right. The title for today's message is Fully Trust in the Lord. Fully Trust in the Lord. Are you facing a challenge in your life? right now are you in a crossroad where you need to know the right path or the right way to go the right thing to do that is in accordance to God's will are you in a situation where you need to make a life-changing decision and you want to make sure that your decision will that you will make is the right one that is to say God's will how can we know? Well, that is what we will learn in today's message. Our Bible text for this morning is a call for us to completely, fully trust in the Lord. It's a call for us to live by faith. That is to say, clinging to trust, not understanding. Clinging to trust, not understanding. 
when we're facing challenges, challenging situations, the Lord wants us to respond by trusting fully in Him. That is fully depending on the Lord, not on our understanding of things or the situation. Trust the Lord even though things may not be clear. In other words, even when, think, when there's no clarity. God calls us again, I says, mentioned to trust, to cling to trust, not clarity. I mean, wouldn't it be great if God always gave us clarity, a clear step-by-step -step directions when we need those directions, when we need to make those decisions, especially those major decisions in life? Clear instructions, just like a Google map navigation system. Turn here, turn there. But I suspect that if God did that, it would handicap our exercise of faith in Him. And so God tells us to live our lives by faith, to trust Him completely. Even though many times we do not know what His plan is, we just simply, sometimes simply need to know what He says in His Word and trust Him. Like this favorite verse of ours, where God declares to the nation of Israel, under bondage, He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. What God says in this word really should be sufficient to give us peace. But we need to trust. We need to trust what God said. God wants us to know that we can and ought to trust Him completely, even though, again, even though we may not see what lies before us. Or even though sometimes we may know, yet we do not understand any of it. Trust God. Exercise faith in His Word. Trust God even though sometimes in life there seems to be more questions than answers. Naturally, in our human point of view, we want answers, we want details, we want clarity, we want understanding. And I believe part of the reason is we, we want to do something about our situation and bring about a result to our liking. In other words, we want to be in control. Take control. But God allows us to face those tough situations to remind us that we are not in control. And so He tells us in this word, the Bible, to trust in the Lord fully, completely. This is how God wants us to live, by faith. Remember 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7? For we live by understanding. Oh, no. We live by faith. Not by sight. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is the Lord. Our text says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Remember, we don't have complete knowledge of everything. We don't, have, we don't even have sufficient strength of our own. We certainly don't have the strength to handle life on our own. Sometimes we try, but we all fall short in dealing with the challenges that we face in life. You see, we are weak in ourselves. We are frail. We are finite, limited in many ways, if not all our ways. And certainly, none of us are in control. We realize and understand this truth that we are not in control when we're up in a plane 30,000 feet high and suddenly there's this turbulence. Or when the doctor tells us of a serious health condition. And many other situations in this trouble-filled life. And so God tells us to what? To trust fully or completely in Him. It's a clear instruction, is it not? but it's very difficult to obey. Especially in those times 
those mentally and emotionally challenging situations. Or in those times that we think we know and have understanding of the situation, we try to handle it depending on our own understanding. But again, the Lord tells us not to lean on our own understanding. He calls us to fully trust in Him. So what does this mean, to trust? Well, let's go to our text. For some, it's, it's a review. Let's review this matter of trusting. Verse 5, as we have just read, and it's up there on the screen, it says, trust. What is trust? It's putting our faith onto something or someone. Putting our full confidence, that is to say, our full weight, our total dependence on the object of our faith. That's what trust is. So what's the object of our faith? Where are we going to put our trust in? It says there, trust in the Lord. It's clear and it's obvious. However, many people, remember, many people don't trust or put their trust in the Lord. We need to understand that people, everyone, trust in someone or in something. Trust is, I mean, the truth is, everyone has faith. Everyone has faith. But not everyone has faith in the Lord. And we all know that. There's the Muslim faith, the Buddhist faith, and all this other religion, and they put their faith in their man-made gods, perceived gods, but not in the true and living God. Not everyone trusts in the Lord. But again, everyone has faith and exercises their faith, at least in something, even without realizing or thinking about it. For example, when you got into your car, you trust your car will work. Or when you get into an Uber or a bus, you trust that the driver will bring you safely to your destination. Or when you go into a restaurant and order food, you trust that the chef or the cook did not put poison in your food. When you sat in your chair, you had faith that the chair will hold you so that you sat on it and put your full weight with full confidence, your total confidence on the chair without even thinking about it. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord, to put our full weight, our full dependence, our full confidence in Him. That's what God wants us to do. Listen, the strength of our faith is only as strong as the object of our faith. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord. So if our faith is indeed in the Lord, then our faith is strong because of the Lord, because of who He is. Who is the Lord? It's Jehovah. Yahweh. The great I Am. The Lord God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The Lord who is in control of all these things. Who created everything by fiat. In other words, by the decree of His word. His authoritative word. God said, let there be. And there was. That shows absolute power, strength, complete knowledge, wisdom that requires continuous presence. In other words, it's reflective of God's omnipotence being all-powerful, omniscience being all-knowing, omnipresent who is all-present. This is who the Lord is. He is the Almighty God with whom nothing is too difficult with whom nothing is impossible. Our God is the God who is able, as Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our God is the God who is able. The Lord is able. How can we not trust? 
the God who is the Lord who is able. So trust in the Lord. Now, the nature of faith, our faith, in other words, how does God want us to trust Him? Going back to our text. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all our hearts. That is to say, wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. Not even three-quarters of our heart. Or most of our hearts, but with all our hearts. Our heart, of course, is not referring to this physical organ that pumps blood into our body, which sometimes I feel... Why is my heart so pump, strong and pumping blood? I can even see, show my family, look, my veins are popping out. And my daughter saying, don't show it to me. Heart is representative of the center of our being, where we have our emotions, our desires, our passions. In other words, things that control a person's life. The heart is the control center that controls a person's life. And that's why the Bible tells people to surrender their hearts to the Lord, to believe in your heart, the Lord. As believers and followers of Christ, we surrender and submit our hearts to God, to who God is. He is Lord. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all our hearts, put our faith completely and fully Many of us have, us have been Christians for a long time, yet when we are faced with those very challenging situations, when we're faced with what we say real needs, whether that needs be in our finances or in our health, in our relationships, we seem to easily forget to trust completely in the Lord. And then we begin to try to figure things out. We think of ways how we can resolve our situation to our liking. As though God is not there and God is not going to provide what we need in that situation. Listen, our Heavenly Father gave and sacrificed His only Son and provided us the only way to Himself that is Christ Jesus, His Son. The only way to eternal life. The only way to heaven. God sacrificed His only begotten Son. God provided or met our eternal spiritual need of salvation and we trusted Him in that. Yet for some reason, when we're faced with our temporary earthly needs, we seem to forget to trust God to meet our needs even in those situations. We think that God will meet our material needs but not wisdom, guidance, strength. Let us meditate on this in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He, that is God, the Father, who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? Philippians 4, 19. Remember, Paul says to the church in Philippi, and my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Listen, you and I can trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And so, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then what does it say? Lean not on your own understanding. As in, do not depend. Do not lean. Do not put your confidence on your own understanding. Do not put your faith in your own understanding. Put your faith fully in the Lord. Listen, we all know certain things or some things, and we have an amount of, of understanding of things. But we need to be careful because our knowledge and understanding can get in the way of simply trusting and obeying God in what He clearly says in His Word. Let us be careful with our knowledge and understanding because it can get in the way of simply trusting 
and obeying God in what He clearly says in His Word. Especially when we're opinionated, or just to put it simply blunt, proud. God is not telling us to stop and using our brains, as in don't think, don't understand. Nothing wrong with wanting or trying to understand. But God does not want us to depend. On our understanding. Because even though we may have knowledge and understanding, and even though we may understand a situation, does not always or necessarily mean that what we know or understand is the way or the path that God wants us to take. Many times we want to figure things out so that we rationalize, and for the most part, it's again, it's because we want to control the outcome to our liking. But we know, again, we're not in control. And when we attempt to control what we cannot control, we make matters worse. Listen, God does not tell us to figure things out. He doesn't. Or to always, even to always understand even what He tells us in His Word. Because we will not always understand the thoughts and the ways of God. Remember Isaiah? 55 verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Many times we don't even understand ourselves. And so the Bible tells us, lean not on your own understanding. By depending on your reasonings or your rationalizations, depending on your understanding, you are really being independent of God without even realizing it or even, not your, even your intention. Listen, don't let your own understanding or what you think you know be the excuse not to fully trust God with all your heart. Don't let your understanding be the excuse not to fully surrender and be in complete submission to what God clearly says. When you do that, again, when we do that, we're being independent of God, which is, again, a nice way of saying we're being proud. I can do this. Humble yourself and be dependent, totally dependent on God. To say humble is to say, I don't know. I think I know, but really I don't know. That's humility. Acknowledging. You don't have to be emotional about it. Crying doesn't mean necessarily that, that you're humble. Or many times we cry because we're just being emotional. When we refuse to be independent, but instead be dependent fully on God and acknowledge God in all our ways, then He will make our path straight. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And then it says what? Verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. We all have our ways. Ways of doing things. Our ways represents our attitudes, our behaviors, seen in our ways of doing things in the different areas or ways of our lives. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Where is God in your way right now? Where is God in your attitude, in your behavior, in doing things? Where is God as you deal with that situation in that area of your life? you don't know, then seek God. Acknowledge Him in your way, in that area of your life where you need to make a decision. Ask God what He wants in that particular area in your life. In all your ways, acknowledge Him for success. Acknowledge Him. 
acknowledge you, the Lord, who the Lord is. The word acknowledge means to recognize, and we are to recognize or acknowledge that He is Lord. Is He not? He is Lord and we are not. Because He is Lord, He has the right, the authority to tell us what to do, but again we need to trust and obey. He is Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty, the great I Am. So when we acknowledge Him in our ways, we acknowledge that He, again, as we mentioned earlier, He is omnipresent. He is there with you. As He promised, He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is omniscient. He knows what you're going through. And He knows the way to take. Acknowledge that He is omnipotent, that He is able to do above all that you could ask or think. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge what He can do. Now, the word acknowledge is more than just recognizing Him in our minds that is intellectually recognizing Him, knowing facts about Him. To acknowledge the Lord has more to do with knowing, knowing Him. The root word of acknowledge is know, acknowledge. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. That is to say, to know Him, know who He is, not just intellectually with the facts about who He is, but know Him experientially in the experience of your life in the different ways and areas of your life know him as in experience who he is and what he can do how by trusting and obeying his word know what he can do as in experience what he can do in that area of your life where you're you're facing this challenge where you need to know the right direction to take Know that you can trust Him completely. Experience that. Know that. And know what He wants you to do in that area of your life. And then, as you continue to go to His Word and prayer, submit to it by doing what He tells you to do. In practical terms, how do we really do this? How do I know God's direction? How can I know whether I, what I am about to decide or what I'm about to do is in fact God's direction, God's way, God's will, and not my way? That is based on my own understanding. Practically speaking, whatever it is you're facing and going through, and if you're wondering, that what you're thinking of doing is the right way. The right way to go about this situation. You need to ask yourself this question. Is what I'm thinking of doing, is what I'm about to do, does it align with what God says in His Word? There are a number of clear instructions in God's Word in how He wants us to deal with a particular situation. There are clear instructions in what God wants us to do. Like in the Old Testament, He says to the nation of Israel, Worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Do not steal, do not kill, do not bear false witness. Those are the instructions. In the New Testament, in the church, the Lord tells us to forgive one another, serve one another, encourage one another, build up one another, love one another. Those are clear instructions. Prefer one another in love. By this, all men will know that you are many disciples. But yes, so many times we miss these clear and simple instructions because we lean, we depend on our own understanding. We recognize Him in our minds and with our hearts. But again, it's all just knowledge and statement of facts. But we really haven't known Him as in experience Him and the power of His Word. That's what happens when we depend on our own understanding instead of simply trusting and obeying what God clearly says in His Word. We need to acknowledge Him that way. That way. So again, I need to ask myself, is what I'm asking, uh, is what I'm thinking of doing, the direction I'm about to take, the decision I'm thinking of making, is it what God says? in His Word.
If not, then don't do it. As a matter of fact, don't do anything. Don't make any decisions, but wait on the Lord. It's simple again, right? But it's hard to do when we want to depend on our own understanding. So, what I'm about to do, if I know it's not what the Bible says for me to do, then I, I'm not going to do it. But if what you're going to do is what God tells you in His Word, clearly, then do it. Do it. Just trust and do what God says in His Word. And you don't have to rationalize or justify what you're doing because you can simply say, this is what the Lord clearly says in His Word. Sometimes, there are times when we rationalize and justify, probably it's because it's not there. The Lord doesn't really tell us that. It's possible that that may be the reason. I'm not saying all the time. Our thoughts, our decisions, our actions, our lives must align with what God says to us in His Word. Remember, God's Word is our authority, not only our authority, but our guide. That's why if you acknowledge Him, He will direct our path. So acknowledge Him and submit to His Word. And that's why it's important to spend time with the Lord both in prayer and in the Word, the study and meditation of His Word, because it is in those times that we see the leading of the Lord. We see the way of the Lord. It is in those times that we discover the will of God. We find out what is right in God's eyes. Not what is right in our own understanding, but what God clearly says is right. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. The word straight refers to what is right as opposed to crooked, meaning wrong. A straight path is the right path. It is the right way. Crooked path is the wrong path. It is the wrong way. Do you know? Do you want to know the right path? The right way? The right decision? The right thing you need to do? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. In the King James Version that I read earlier, it says he will direct your path as in he will show you the right way to go. How will he do that? Through his word. Remember, God, the Holy Spirit, directs our steps in and through his word. Psalms 119, verse 105 says what? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet to show us the steps. And when he shows us the steps, it's one step at a time. It's not the whole plan. Until we do the first step, then God shows us the second step. Because if God shows us the whole thing, many of us will say, I don't think I want to go that way. So, lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He shows us the direction to go. Psalm 23, remember? Verse 3, He leads me in paths of righteousness for His sake's sake. And so when we need direction, what do we do? We ask God. We consult His Word of Scriptures. We need to go to the Bible and seek the Lord. And how? Seek the Lord with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Again, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in and through His Word. And then directs our steps even as He leads us in the direction, in the paths of righteousness. Proverbs 16, verse 9 says, The mind, the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord what? Directs his steps. This refers not only to divine direction, but sometimes divine intervention. He will make your path straight. Now, path straight does not necessarily mean that life is going to be smooth. Or life is going to be easy. But it means that your way and your path will be clear. Not cleared of all these uh, challenges. 
but clear as in no confusion. You will know the right direction to take. You will know the right thing to do as if that is, again, that is if you acknowledge Him. The right direction and the right steps you need to take will be clear to you. Your path will be straight so that you will be able to see beyond the now and the present, which means you have hope, a guaranteed expectation of what God promised in His Word. And that hope gives you the peace that you need as you go through the challenge that you're facing. But it starts with what? Trusting in the Lord. Isaiah 26 verse 3, remember this? You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed, focused, fixed, steadfast on you because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord most of the time. No, trust in the Lord. For the Lord, the Lord Himself, is the rock eternal. Other translation says, our everlasting strength. You will experience God's will, which is good and pleasing and perfect as incomplete. You will not lack anything. When the Lord makes our path straight and we follow His path, His way, we will have the sense of rightness. In what we are doing, there's a sense of goodness in our living. So that, again, we don't have to rationalize or justify what we're doing. Because we know, according to His Word, that His way is the right way to live. So let me just say this again. God making our path straight does not necessarily mean that He will remove those obstacles in our path. Remember, our earthly life is filled with bumps. There's going to be potholes in our path. We will encounter many hindrances and challenges, if not troubles, in our lives. I'm not going to read that, but you already know that so many times. The Lord says, in this world, you will have, you will have trouble. God does not promise that He will remove all the troubles in our lives, but He will give us the faith to overcome them. Why? Why does God not remove the troubles instead? Because remember, God uses troubles as trials. Trials that give us opportunity to exercise our faith in Him. Opportunity to trust Him with all our hearts. When we fully trust Him again, and not lean on our own understanding, but acknowledging He will make our path straight. That's what the Lord promised He will do even what we see in our text. So let me say this, when we trust Him completely and lean up on our own understanding and acknowledge Him in all our ways, He will show us His will. That is the right direction, the right path. The right way to deal with the trial and make the right decision and overcome it. So, when you're facing a trying situation, remember it's an opportunity to fully trust Him, to fully trust in the Lord. But it's also an opportunity to show those near you, to demonstrate to those around you how to deal with situations in life. It's an opportunity to teach others to completely, totally, fully trust Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious words. I pray that we will not just be merely hearers of your word, but doers. And we thank you once again for your mercy and your grace that is sufficient. Oh, how we need you, Lord, every moment of our lives. But we thank you that you also have given us your Holy Spirit who indeed speaks to us and helps us to live the life that you've called us to live. That is to trust, fully trust in you. And so thank you once again. 
And may your word accomplish the very reason why you have given it to us. Our desire, Lord God, is that your will be done for the glory and honor of your name. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Death cannot hold.